Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, we just got done scrapping together an engine for my Terramite tractor that the engine blew up in, actually through a rod. But we have three blown up engines left over. So my thought is to possibly make a running engine out of these three that are blown up. So that's the original one that came out of the Terramite, that one we believe through a rod. These two were on a pallet upstairs, were given to me a couple of years ago. When we started looking into them, uh, one had missing rockers and push rods and another one had bent rockers and push rods both in the same cylinder head after you know bending the rods back and uh trying to spin it over no compression in one side on both of those engines so here's the thing i hope we have a good cylinder head on that one still that through the rod and we could possibly use it on one of these two engines to make one good runner spare backup whatever you want to call it afterwards and plus we can kind of like see what happened to them as we tear them down so without further ado let's start turning some wrenches and see if we could fix an engine so these two on the end both the same cylinder has the problem of no compression and both have like the rocker assemblies removed and were screwed with and then compression works on the other side of them so i guess we'll probably just pick the better of the two and we'll start tearing into them, kind of figure out what happened. The only thing I see on this one, the someone cut the plug off the end of it. And this one still has the uh, connector still on it, air cleaner still on it. Just trying to assess what looks better. It could possibly have, you know, maybe less hours on it. So, I don't know, maybe we'll take look at the oil filters. Sometimes that's a good giveaway. Yeah, maybe we'll go with this one. We'll take this one, move this one forward, start getting the cylinder head off of it, and we'll see what kind of damage happened to it. Yeah, I was kind of hoping when I was looking into them at first that the uh, cylinder heads were interchangeable from side to side, but they're not. The exhaust comes out on the same side. Yeah, you got mice in there, huh? Yeah, so we're getting one to get rid of this tin. We guys are getting all this the plastic and sheet metal out of our way to get to it. Let's get rid of that. See how our throttle is in this carburetor. Choke moves. We want to look into the throttle plate later on if we stick with that carburetor. We want to get this whole front shroud off of there. I don't know if we need to get the center off of it first where the fan is, but we'll start just taking hardware off it. Front's got to come off. There's the fan. A pile of dirt. We gotta get that intake manifold off of there. Let's get the carb off. Because I think the linkages are gonna bind up on it. There's the shut off. Get rid of that. And we should be able to twist it. Twist the whole carburetor to get the linkages out. Once you get one, the second one's easy. There's that. A little spring that holds. Gets rid of the slack in the system is what that's for. And the other one already fell out. And let's, what are you gonna do next? The intake manifold? Hope we get these 
out of our way. I think that, actually, I think we have to get rid of this whole throttle assembly anyway. Let's concentrate on that with holding that in place. So we want to get rid of all of this. See one there, one there. And I'm going to take a little um, white uh, paint stick and we're just going to mark where the throttle linkages were. Mostly just that one is the important one, but. So that part's, the uh, governor's going to stay attached to the engine. This can go with us. Let's get these two bolts off and see if this assembly will come out. This is the side that's blown up. Let's concentrate. We're probably going to take it all apart, would be my guess, but let's get rid of this tin. we got to be able to get down to the head bolts. I don't know if... Um... There we go. So the head stops right there. So everything here and around it has to come off. we got to get rid of this tin. I don't know if I can be able to do it without taking the starter off. I see one little bolt right there. Let's see if that'll do it. No, hold on somewhere else still. All right, right there. I like how the size keeps swapping back and forth. <laughs> Make sure you can see. All right. Come on. Don't make me have to take the starter off. <laughs> there we go. I don't know if I get it back in there, but we got it. Get rid of the intake manifold now. Let's cut the tie wraps holding all the wires up. Remembering where all this goes, right? And we should have four bolts holding the intake. fall off for us. There we go. Now we're in. I don't have an engine gasket set for this thing either, so. All right, we want to get this cylinder head off again, which breaks. There's the brake mark right there. Okay, so the coil should be able to stay. Let's go get a bigger gun and we'll get the head bolts off of it and we'll flip it over. Because right now you can kind of tell the, um, the valves. I say it pretty much, I think it has a bent valve or a floater to valve. I don't know if it's going to show up. See, it, to me, it looks like this valve is sitting lower than this one. Also, it's kind of the way it's sitting on the keepers is a little weird too, isn't it? Like that's got more of a stem than that one. Or it could be making it up. <laughs> uh, let's get the head bolts out. You ready? Let's see what we get. I don't see one that's obviously bent. And I think it was the exhaust valve that we were dealing with too, which would be this one. Well, that's kind of, I see a gap there though. I do see a gap right in that space. I don't know if you could see it. So we're going to have to pop those valves out. 
Let's go look at the uh, board, make sure there's nothing going on inside here. Looking pretty cruddy, got a lot of crap in there. Oh, yeah, all the mud and junk that's sitting in there, huh? They were stored indoors the whole time I had them, but I don't know what has you know gone on in the interim. Actually, kind of looks like water, doesn't it? Sitting in the bottom there. Go get a rag. We'll go wipe that out a little bit and see if we can uh, get rid of some crap. Plus, the head gasket's also chunked out of it. This is one of the two of them we put. Um, we put rockers in it and it bent them when we tried to go fire it up. Is it this one? We spun it and it bent the valves. This one doesn't look, don't quite remember. Hmm. Could always put a starter there. Right, let's get some of that crap cleaned out of there and we'll spin it. Also, I don't know if that head gasket blew out or just fell apart when we took it apart. Usually it'll, you know, black staining will show up. Let's go get a, grab a rag real quick. Should have marked, I should have marked the engines, which ones were which as we were playing with it, but that wasn't our focus at the time. Possibly. And the cylinder head would be... Like that, so it would be this area. Eh, I don't know. It's pretty even all the way around, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't think we were suffering from a blown head gasket. I think it's got valve seating issues. And the valve seating issues might be just crap that was sitting on it. Hmm. Dare yeah, we say maybe save two engines? <laughs> Let's uh, turn that to the top dead center. Or is looking pretty punky though. It's got a bunch of um, staining on it. I'm gonna go cut my hand over it. Yeah, it's drawing no vacuum. Generally, you would try to like if the rings were good, you would suck your hands in. Yeah, we're not getting much. So, this may have a uh, bottom end, a, a ring issue also. Especially with all the water that came out. I bet you the, the rings are probably seized in their spot. Yeah, you see all the pitting and stuff that's around them. Usually you cup your hand over that, you should be able to you know, create a, a vacuum pressure. And I'm not getting either one. You know, like right there, just kind of leaving a trail. Want to open up another engine? I don't know if um, you know, the main goal is try to save one first, and then maybe we'll just kind of tear stuff apart later on to see, you know, what physically happened to them. Yeah, do you remember the gentleman saying the one? He, again, this is a couple years ago. They, one of them was smoking, so that would could probably be the case in this one. If the rings are cooked, it's pushing the crankcase oil up into the top of the engine, and it's causing it to do what it's doing. Let's go just check the lifters. That one's working. That one's working. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have you go through the visual of tearing all the crap off of this one. I may go do the same on this one. We'll get that cylinder head off. The, and this, I believe, is the one that was bending the pressure rods. I'm not positive of that. But I'll bring you back when we're getting the cylinder head off of that one. We'll see what's going on with this. That's right. It's kind of screwing up. That's the one that... I know it's got a thrown rod. This is the one that we looked at that had bent the push rods and we we're trying to get it to run. So this is the one we need to tear apart. Not that. And cylinder head number two. Ah, uh, so close.
bunch of carbon packed around that one. That's probably holding that valve open. That's a ton of carbon, huh? Looks kind of weak in the same spot for the head gasket. Let's see if we can get that out of there one piece. It's a chance we may need that. I'm gonna try a local place, see if they have any. Okay, I'm gonna... Yeah, we'll gingerly put that somewhere else. Yeah, let's go burn that one up. There you go. That one. That one's got some pressure on. <laughs> so the other one's got stuck rings. This one does not. Let me just go feel the lifters. So I would think we could probably clean up one of those two cylinder heads. We'll take them apart, take the valves out of them. And my guess is the one that had the water in it, the valves were probably the one that were binding. Again, I should have marked them when I took them apart, but um, it just wasn't a priority at the moment. You know, before I even started, it already had bent push rods when we went to go look at it. So uh, let's take, let's go take with that. What is that? Piece of brake line fell out of it. <laughs> Let's um, clean this one up and um, we'll get the valves out of this and we'll see if this one could be savable. Between the two of them, we should find one good one. And we'll plop it back on, put the rockers on it, and we'll just, the starter's still on, we'll be able to do a compression test and we'll see what we get back. So I went to lunch and then we hit the two local places that kind of gave us the parts from. Neither one of them had head gaskets on it. And something I try to want to knock out today. Urban legend has it that you could take a gasket, head gasket, and spray it with aluminum paint. <laughs> and it will help it be rejuvenated. I don't know. I figured we'd give it a shot. I don't think this engine's gonna go back into anything that's like a long-term run. Probably like a, a mini bike or something like that. But let's give it a shot. Well, that I probably maybe hit that another coat or two after it dries. Let's go take that cylinder head apart, like we were talking about. Right, so we want to get the valves out, and the valves are held in with little keepers. So you gotta compress the spring in some sort. We got a couple of different tools. Not sure what's gonna work for us. We want the exhaust valve, which is that one. Is the one we really suspect. Sometimes you can get this little guy in there, and. It just collapses the spring itself. There's other styles that um, can make it so that it goes on the other side of the valve and supports it. And this should work. It looks like it's floating it. We got to get the valve to. Um, I should be over here. Let's try it. We got to whack it with like a, a little mallet to break the connection. I guess. I don't know if that's enough room. We'll see. You kind of pick them out with a magnet. I don't think it's going to be enough. Let me reset it. And I'll bring you back. Let's see if this guy will do it. Let's try this setup. Oh, man. Oh, I guess. Now we can let that off and it should all come apart. Curious to see how much carbon is underneath that. 
It's all flaking off just from the tool. That's the spring assembly. And that is just gunked up pretty good. Yeah, you weren't going to get a good seal with that at all. Yeah, it's just packed right in there. Let's go look at that cylinder head. Yeah. Look at all the carbon that's built down, down underneath it, too. So my guess is, I wonder if this ran with the, uh, the choke on. And it caused all these carbon deposits to build up. And it built up so much, it just made it so the valve couldn't work anymore. I don't know if that's a crack. Right there, I see something. We're gonna get the other valve at it. We'll take a better peek at it and probably hit it with a wire wheel, clean some of the crap off. I don't know if I want to break. There it goes. At least that one's got a sheen going around it. That one was still closing. Again, usually it is the exhaust valve that does have all the issues. And you can definitely see, see what was happening with it though. I don't know, maybe the other thing I think of is too, it's probably more in the other engine that had no compression. Um, they get real common that you get mouse nests in, and they're air cooled and they overheat. And sometimes when they do that, they'll, they'll actually drop a valve seat right out of it. And then, as it cools off, they'll fall back in, but they're sometimes on an angle. So I'm gonna go take a wire wheel. We're gonna go clean all these surfaces up. We'll take a look. Again, that exhaust one is the one that's uh, been issues. And yeah, that was definitely not gonna seal. I think it's the one too that the spark plug we took out was like, it was like totally just gunked over. I'm right, gonna go clean some stuff up, see if we got any good parts here. Yeah, so the intake seat looks pretty good. Nice clean line going all the way around it. The exhaust, it cleaned up decent. I don't see any like real heavy pits in the seat part of it. And it looks like it's pretty level all the way around. Look at the valves. The intake valve looks decent. I don't see anything on that. Usually that's not the one because that's not the one that's dealing with the spent hot gas, you know. 
the uh, exhaust valve on the other hand, you look at the surface of it. It kind of looks like the surface of the moon if you were able to look close at it. So we could try lapping that one in on that seat and see if we get a nice clean line going around on the both of them. We also got the other cylinder head that's on that, the one that threw a rod that we could always steal off of it, but let's just kind of continue with this one. Probably what we can do, the thing is how many head gaskets, you know, how many head gaskets to work with, so it's not going to survive taking it on and off. Let's uh, throw some lapping compound on that and see if we can get that one to do, get a good seat. If we feel that we like it, we'll bolt it back up with the head gasket we got and uh, we'll do a compression test on it and see what it comes up with for a number. Yeah, hopefully that light doesn't bleach you out. I got a hook to a drill on the back side. Let's see if we can get some lapping compound in there. And we'll give her a little I'll lap my finger too. <laughs> I'm just kind of listening to it. You hear how the grit, gritty noise starts and then it goes to a find. Then I pull away, I let the material go back in again because it just pushes it out. It'll work it pretty good. I think the valve is what needed most of the work. Let's go see if it did anything. If you see a nice shiny ring going around it, contact patch. It looks decent. Yeah, it looks okay. We'll do the same to the intake and I'll clean it up a brake clean, get rid of all that stuff in there. Definitely don't want that going down to the rings. <laughs> I'll bring you back. It shows up, but they're looking pretty good. That's the exhaust valve. It's got a nice clean line, making contact all the way around. And the same on that too. I think at the I the I see a little bit of um like rubbing or scoring on the stem. Not quite sure if that's gonna be an issue or not. So I'm gonna go put them back together. Something you, you could put like fluid in the chamber and you see the level drops down. But I think we're pretty good. Put all that back together, maybe we'll get that cylinder head back on there and uh, we'll try doing a compression test with all its regular components and see if it's able to be saved. I expect actually more damage than that. But, you know, carbon will do that. It'll hold the valve open and run on one cylinder.
So that was a gasket that came off of there. I don't want to disturb that little piece of hunk that's right there. So we'll try to leave that alone. Just clean off all the crap that's on it. And you really don't want to get any like, oil in between. It just uh, lubricates it. Compression is going to be trying to push against that outward the whole time. And if you lubricate it, it's just going to make it that much easier. That's a bore look. We'll wipe that down. Some high tech engine repair here, huh? <laughs> the bore actually looks pretty good. Hmm. Not quite sure how the other side is. I'm kind of leery whether we're going to go screw with that other side because of the fact that I just don't have head gaskets. I, I was hoping I'd get two of them. But. And I'm impatient of like waiting five days for them to show up in the mail, you know. Maybe I'll order some for the uh, other engine over there. All right, let's go get our painted gasket and put it back on. Mm, the piece that's missing is right there. I'm going to go take the head bolts and uh, clean them so that the threads aren't all. Probably should have hit an air gun down the threads too just to clean them out. That's not where they were. Put the rusty ones where the rust was. Clean ones there. Let's just run them in with the gun. We're not going to torque them down with this. Let me see if we can look up what the torque spec should be. My guess is probably like 23 pounds. So it's 200 inch pounds and then go up to 370 inch pounds. So that kind of converts to about 15 foot pounds. We'll run it down to 15. And we'll go back. Clicker up to 31. So 31.7. I think uh, close enough is close enough. Uh, my engine might spin on this. See if we can get a way to support it. one time over just to make sure they all click sometimes the first one will, will take a little bit more as you draw the head down seems like it's decent all right i'm gonna throw the push rods back in the rockers on them adjust the valves and we'll hook our jumper pack up to it and see what we get for compression yeah, this is the one we put clean oil in so good it's still got oil in the crankcase and it's got hydraulic valves so i don't have to adjust anything you just kind of run them down and they hydraulically pump up to the size they need Let's get a jumper pack on the starter, and we'll give her a spin and give her a listen. He said there's a slight chance of rain. <laughs> slight. Slight for light rain, I think it was. It's got no plugs in it, it does have oil in it. I took all the wires off so it didn't get tangled up. See if we can give it a spin if we go. I think we may want to put some bolts in there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely pumps oil, that's a good sign. Can yeah, we go throw something in there so it's not pissing out? Yeah, let's try that again. Ooh. 
does not feel like much compression. That one's good. Okay. Now we're all right. Let's go get the gauge, put it in there, see what we get. What's your guess on uh, compression? I'm gonna say 120, 100. It may have had to pump down the lifter a little bit. The lifter might have had a little too much oil in it. And it just spin, so it was holding the valves open for a second until the lifter adjusted its height. I think that's what was going on. All right, what'd I say, 120 on this side? Let's see what we got. <laughs> 150. Hopefully the other side is like fairly close to that. Hopefully 120. Sometimes you get an engine that's got real high on one side and low on the other. It, it will lope at an idle. Got on this one. It's a number. I'm gonna say 120. I changed my mind. My mind. Oh, we gotta take that side apart too. <laughs> That's got to. Let's, let's go run it. Probably just as much carbon on that side as there is on the other. Yeah, that, that's way too low. I'm willing to bet we take it apart though. And it probably needs the same cleaning as the other side did. So, just because, I'm gonna go take it apart. The other thing too is you probably could run it, fire it up, and if you had a good carburetor on it and was running the right stuff, it may fix itself. But, we're gonna go find out. I'm gonna go take it, I'm gonna go take it apart. Everything's already off of it anyway, so why not? Looks pretty clean. Bent rod, so push rods are bent. No, they look good. I just leave that tin right there. Gonna get rid of that. I don't want that anymore. And what does this side have to offer? Come on, gasket, stay good. Yeah, same kind of the same idea. So we'll do the same. I'm gonna probably just speed ahead. Let's just go make sure the bore looks okay. I didn't lose anything on the bottom end. That looks pretty clean. So my guess is this engine probably ran, it probably had a carburetor problem, or the air filter was like really dirty and it just ran with a choke on and it just ran so rich that it just contaminated the crap out of itself. Yeah. Gasket looks decent. I'm gonna do the same thing all over again that I did the other side, and I'll spare you. Unless it's something, I find something that looks neat, I'll, uh, we'll just kind of advance the video a little bit. Yeah, that's the exhaust valve. That one's even worse. Definitely see how oh, that wasn't closing up. It's like right there, wherever that high side of clump is. Where'd it go? Yeah, that right there. Another one there. It's all over. Yeah, they cleaned up nicely too. Both of those seats look fairly decent. And there. One thing too that someone's gonna ask. So there's guides that wear out to you. These are the guides down in here, and that's how much uh, play the valve has. So basically, you drop them in. 
saying drag right here, that doesn't matter because you want to be like where the stroke of the valve is, which is probably about that much. So you, you bring it out to the extension of the valve. Get that in there too. And just kind of looking for any play side to side. The exhaust probably is going to have more than the intake because it kind of takes more heat. That one's got some play to it. The intake usually stays pretty good. And that one feels pretty good. So. They are what they are. Yeah, she's back together. Let's give her a little spin. Let's see how it does. Yeah, it's zero compression right now. Let's give it a second. Yeah, absolutely nothing. I'm going to throw the gauge in it. Yeah, I think those the lifters, when, once you take the everything off of them, they're allowed to pump back up again. Let them sit for a second with some pressure on them. I hope. <laughs> I think we can lift them right out of there if we have to. I think they can grab and pull them straight up. Because I remember we had bent push rods, and I think this is the engine that had it. Um, I bet you the valves were hitting that carbon that was in the cylinder. That's my guess. Come on, baby. It's not supposed to get worse. Make sure I don't have a, a push rod that's not seated correctly down below. No, they're good. I gotta set up a little bit, see if it comes back. I mean, the, wherever you lock these down is kind of how they're centered too. That one, this one looks like it's on an angle, but I'm centered over the valve. Another thing too, I was kind of wondering, like, why has it got like this weird mark right in the center of the rocker? And the fuel pump is in the valve cover, and the back of the valve pushes on the fuel pump. Kind of funky, huh? I guess a cam's a cam. It's starting to sound like it wants to do something. There we go. There we go. Come on, give me 150. Uh, yeehaw. All right. So, I think we have spark. Let's go grab some decent spark plugs. The coils, generally, when there's no wires connected to them, should have spark. Most of them are that way. And then you ground out that terminal on the coil, and that's what shuts spark off, and you want to go kill it. But we'll just go check, make sure both of those have spark. And then maybe we'll kind of piece it back together, see if we can get her to fire up. Are there any new spark plugs, Clark? Let's see if that gives it thing up. That one's good. How about your little friend over there? Spark on both. Let's go throw those plugs in real quick and we'll spin it over. Just kind of listen to the compression. Make sure there's no clunking and thunder. Light rain, they said. It's light rain. Hate to see the heavy rain. I should put up a little bit of fight. Sounds good. A little for you. A little for you. Anything? <laughs>
they'll both fire. All right, let's go get some more parts on it. I think we're all set to go except for a carburetor. I figure before we put one on, maybe we'll crack one open and take a peek. We'll take the cleanest one of them all. One. That one. That one looks like it's not rusty. Well, we got that one or this one, right? Which one do you want to go for? I think this is the one that was on it. It went to that that fuel pump on the valve cover. I'll try this one first. If not, actually, this one doesn't have the, the solenoid on it, does it? Yeah. I don't know if it ever had it. My apples to apples here, yeah. But this one's got the little 12 volt solenoid that you gotta put power to for it to allow fuel to go through. And this one, I don't know if it's just missing. I think it is. That's the one. Yeah, let's go crack that open. All depends on whether it's sat with a bunch of gas in it or if it just kind of all evaporated. Kind of bright out. We got three of them to work with, right? So the two engines that are left over, one's got a thrown rod, and one that the rings are all not doing anything. Possibly the bore shot. Well, that looks pretty good, actually. I am going to take an executive decision. I'm going to rinse that out with a little carb cleaner. We're just going to throw it back together, hook some gas up to it, and see what it does. Oh, we get close to dumping some fuel in it, but I think I better take a second <laughs> purge or that crap off the bench. It's all going to start falling. Let's go fill her up with fuel. At least the, the float ball. Should be enough to run it for a little bit. I can always hang a gas can on if we want to run it for a while, but... I kind of like having the fact that if something goes wrong, there's not a ton of fuel. <laughs> so... I think that's about it. We'll give her a little shot down the carb just to fire it off with. We get the jumper pack hooked up and we got to put uh, 12 volts to that to make that solenoid kick in. Let's see if we get a little click when we... Strong power. We're gonna find out in a second. Let me back you up. Hopefully, just jump off the bench. <laughs> Probably should want to make sure I got towards idle. That's idle right there. We we'll just kind of crank it at an idle. See what happens. Get the wire out of the way. I don't know if it's running off the fuel in the carb though. Let's uh, give it another shot. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it's drawing anything in. Make sure I get the right end power to do. It'll run. It'll stay running. That's full. I'm gonna give her a little bit of choke once it gets going. Might be just a little too thin. Yeah. So I don't think that solenoid's working on that carb because it should have clicked on. Too way to lose the wire. It's got power. <laughs> right. Yes, yeah, so we don't have that solenoid doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, let's just way around that. Can we get that out of there without taking all the plastic off of there? 
It's like those two screws comes out. I think it's got a plunger inside that kind of blocks off a circuit and then backs out. Might be stuck. Close. Runs. Kind of. Yeah, should we get that out of there? I know one carburetor is already missing it. Hopefully. Don't go falling. It's going to go into the abyss. Grab a magnet. I think that's to come out about a bit. I was gonna clear this plastic. Find out. That's so close. Right, I can loosen these two screws up, get the carburetor to lift up a little bit. It's pissing gas out now, it's pouring out. You see it? It's all the gas coming out of the carburetor. So that's not allowing that circuit to open. We'll get it. Ran them up. Of course I didn't clean that out when we were working on it, right? So that should fire like a solenoid to move. <laughs> so I get for being sloppy with working with the carb, right? Yeah, look at all the crud that's in there. Go clean that up. Actually, I'm going to go pop the one out of the other one and see what it looks like. It probably goes, the fuel goes through here and out there or vice versa. Stalactites. Yeah, I pulled the guts right out of it. Well, that is freely supposed to open and close that circuit. Yeah, she was stuck. And again, it's a little electric part that pulls in when you energize it, opens it up and lets the passage go through. And it, it just like was like, boom, and it popped off. Go clean all that up. There's a jet in there too. I'm going to go pop that out. That's what I get for slacking. Cleaning the carb. Getting all cocky. Yeah, bit me in the ass. That's all clear. <laughs> Is now. Yeah, let's hook that power wire up to it and see if it clicks a little bit better than it did the first time. It's actually kind of like hear it pull in, you know? Hey, there we go. All right, now I'm going to fill it up again. I'm going to take a second and blow some of the uh, <laughs> raw gas. Out considering flames are going to be shooting out of the sides of the uh, exhaust ports. Yeah, let's try it again. This time we'll, we'll point the fire side out. You see the shoot shooting out of the the heads. <laughs> we'll give it a little prime, and we need juice to that. Am I getting any click? Ah. Because there's that. No and throttle is that one. Yeah, jumper cable popped off. That was it, I think. It killed the, the circuit for the carburetor. <laughs> she lives! She sounds pretty good. It sounds awesome when there's uh, no exhaust on them. Uh, what do you want to do? Let's, um, I'm going to go top things off. We're just going to let it idle for a second. And give her one more hit. I might go over turn the idle up a little.
might have looked a little low. Yeehaw! About ready to run out. That was gas in there. about to say <laughs> there's literally you know a, a third of one of those in there not that much gas that yeah, seems decent just fine again you know the idle's a little low um make sure the air cleaner's on there's no air fuel mix on that carpet i don't think there's no way to tweak the idle but again it seems like it's just fine I, i'm all all i'm concerned about is that we're running on two cylinders it seems like it's doing what it should and i think it's doing what it should well, how about that Oh, did, we, did we spend any money on this one either? I don't think so. We just kind of used old junk all over again. I tried to. I tried buying head gaskets. <laughs> all, right. all right, guys, before I set myself on fire, let me disconnect a bunch of stuff that's on it. And we'll call that a win. Yeah, I'll probably bag and tag that one and put it upstairs. A little note on it, like what we did with it and what happened. So, awesome. I don't know if we'd be able to save one out of the other ones. I don't know if we want to continue doing videos on these things, but uh, I would think maybe with the one with a blown rod, we could take the piston out of it with unstuck rings and put it in the one that has with the stuck rings, but it's getting ahead of ourselves. I mean, the other thing I was thinking of too is like I, I was kind of holding on to these. I was hoping like to make like a V6 or a V4 out of, but how would we attach? The front side's got a shaft on it, but the other side, all you got is this. I don't know what we can adapt to that end of the crank. I don't even know if that's threaded on the end. If we, we'd have to like make a hub and like maybe um, drill through and put like four screws and then put dowels next to it to try to have something come off of this to attach, you know, stack another engine on it. Yeah, it's still getting ahead of ourselves. Someday projects, right? <laughs> I guess I was just kind of glad to have these while they're on the bench. I figured instead of putting them back upstairs and huffing them around, we'll try to go through them and see what we got. And that one's got a throwing rod, and this one has no um, no rings to the bore. You run your hand over it, and it, there's just no suck. It's got no suck. No, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, I'm rambling. I want to thank y'all for hanging out, doing some wrenching, and uh, we'll get together soon on something else. Till then, later.